In his current body of work, Steam Estado, or Stateless, Nicaraguan American artist Quinn Antonio Briceño explores the blending of Americana with Latinx through painting and collages. Featured in the HEB Gallery at Rockport Center for the Arts, the exhibition is viewable now through October 1st, 2023. Briceño is a St. Louis resident and was selected as the RCA Artist in Residence for 2023. Here we speak with him while he works from a temporary studio during a seven week long stay in Rockport. Quinn, thank you for joining us today. Yeah, thanks for having me. You are currently based in St. Louis. I was born there. My dad moved to um, the United States after the earthquake in Nicaragua in the 70s uh, and just the, the whole Sandinista revolution. And um, after a while, he found his way going to the University of Missouri in Columbia and met my mom there. And uh, that's how I came to be. <laughs> my mom grew up in St. Louis. Uh, I uh, I lived with my grandparents there. And uh, other than the moving back down to Nicaragua after I was born, uh, I've basically been in St. Louis most of my life. Your work speaks to identity, diaspora, and belonging. Uh, what were some of the ways that you were you felt pressured to discard a part of yourself that kind of frequently shows up in your work? There's not a lot of Spanish speakers in Missouri. Um, there's a very small Latin population there. Uh, my dad wasn't really uh, around a whole lot. He was flying to Nicaragua and back uh, a lot to help with my abuelitos. Uh, and my grandparents in the United States don't really speak Spanish. If my mom would speak Spanish to us or anything like that, we'd usually get stares. And even just like going into high school, if I would pronounce my name the way it's, I believe it should be pronounced. I remember doing it for a soccer tournament once. Uh, the people I was with made fun of me for just pronouncing my name correctly. I was dropping off my girlfriend at her house. I got pulled over for just no reason really whatsoever. And they asked me to pronounce my name and uh, I, ha I was promptly asked to step out of the car after that. You often incorporate collage into your work as a representation of the parts of you that were pressured, uh, that you were pressured to discard um, and or you use it to represent um, the parts that were salvaged and saved. Can you touch on that a little bit? Yeah, I think when you look at the history of collage, it's a lot of it is, um, taking things that were supposed to be discarded uh, and using them to create something new. Uh, one man's trash is another one's treasure, uh, which I think is just like a perfect metaphor for like, kind of like the way I'm live. I, I feel like I'm living, like I'm supposed to discard one half of myself uh, and accept another. But um, for me, it does something kind of more magical Um it creates a new space that I feel like, like I can belong and other people like me can belong. This is the uh, the town square down the street from my abuelito's house. Uh, as you can see, there's distortions uh, uh, and things kind of like happening within the piece. Um, that's due to like Google Earth kind of taking a bunch of images together and digitally collaging them, which like works with my own like analog method of collage, uh, which was what I found really interesting about just Google Earth. It's like, oh, I've been doing collage for this whole time. You see these like people in there in, in this, uh, some are rendered and some aren't, some are just like straight collaged over. And for me, um, I use this concept of the cipher, um, which is in mathematics uh, typically means like void of, uh, of of humanity or something or, or like zero. But um, for me, it means kind of more than that. Uh, it actually feels more important kind of because by omitting, you wonder what's there and you wonder what that person is and what they do. Sayi. So it's it's uh, the companion piece of Aya. Um, it, similarly, there, you know, there's dif different distortions. There's the half car which I think people find pretty interesting. I find pretty interesting. It's like any type of movement gets cut off because there's different pictures happening. Um, but this is the street uh, that my abuelitos uh, lived on. Uh, and I guess our, we inherited the house, so it's it's there too. Uh, across the street uh, is the 
the universe, the local university. Um, but it's, you know, it's, it's very similar. It has the same concepts as, as a, yeah, uh, just in a different space. So last year I went to, uh, New Orleans and I actually got to meet, uh, for the first time, uh, uh, my dad's nanny who basically, uh, raised my dad, um, when he came up during the earthquake and the revolution, my dad, uh, lived with a lot of people. He also lived with Christina in, uh, in New Orleans. So it was like, it's kind of like a grandmother that you've never met before. Um, and, uh, she gave me some photos. Uh, one of them was this of my dad. Uh, and it was, uh, it was really nice to see like my dad growing up. I didn't get to see a lot of pictures of him. Um, but it was really like, it ended up being like a really emotional visit. So I wanted to make paint my dad, but I also wanted, uh, to play around with colors. So obviously there's contrasting colors with the, the greens and the red. Um, and there's the, my typical like background pattern, which I, uh, they're based off of Latin American tile patterns. Uh, but in this foreground, you get this, these like weird shapes going on. And uh, I based them off of U.S. military camel camouflage. But this is when he's dealing with war. Um, obviously, there's the whole U.S. contra affair going on. Ultimately, this is like who I am now because of the things that my dad went through. Thank you so much for joining us today. We really love talking with you about your work. Thank you. Thanks. Thanks for having me.